We used to stock six different doors. One for the side wall, one for the end wall, and one for smooth wall shipping containers. Now, we only carry the container modification world dual swinger man door. In this video, I'll teach you, the DIYer, how to assemble it and how to install it. Hope you learned something. These 32 inch man door frames are so sleek. They are so much thinner than the 36s that uh, came before them. So this edge here was about four inches prior and it's only, what is that, an inch and a half or so. So I'm really excited to put this thing together. This is the most recent version of these. It hasn't been put together yet. And so let's just get right at it. Take our side frames. They're a, a new portion of this frame that actually should hold the whole thing together while it's sitting here. So uh, yeah, look at that. So just planting that there now holds this. And if we jump around, probably do the same thing. Hopefully it doesn't drop. Look at that, that is new. So that I really like. That keeps everything in place for me. It's a one person job now. And hopefully these holes line up. Like I said, this is the first time with this revision. Oh, like butter. I cannot believe that this thing's already together. I do have four more rivets to put in and then just the rain drip. And this thing's already ready to set the slab in here with the hinges and uh, start cutting her hole on the container. So I'll just finish riveting this up. Now that I put the other four rivets in, the four corners, it's just put the rain drip on. So you're gonna wanna choose which side to put the rain drip on. And so the footer and the header, they are the same part in this kit, but the latch side and the hinge side are separate parts. So if you install it on that side, we're gonna get ourselves a right hand outswing door, or if I install it on this side, I'll get a left hand outswing door. And so in this instance, we want the right hand outswing, we're gonna install it on this side. Now that we have the frame together, we can get to marking the rough opening on the container. Double check your measurement. Make sure you cut it in the right spot. We'll get this stuff out of the way, show you how it's done. What's really cool about these 32 inch doors is that uh, the rough opening is pretty much 33 inches and so is the, uh, the corrugations are 11 inches on center. So 11, 22, 33. Basically, if you just cut right down the center of the corrugations, odds are, uh, the door is going to fit in there. So if you did mark the center and even just cut on the outside of the line, you're going to be good. A huge advantage to the 32 inch man doors is that they only span across three corrugations. So our 36 inch man doors would span across four corrugations and then we weren't able to install them right dead center of the container. So this, these two welds here are the center of the shipping container and then the door is going to install on the outside corrugations just inside of there. So here we should be able to just eyeball it and run a line down. I'm curious. You definitely don't want to use a level that's plumb. You just want to measure off a common point on the shipping container because if your container is not sitting level, now you're going to have your door uh, kinked to one side or the other. And the same thing on the other side. And we are at, bang on, 33. So we haven't gone all the way to the top where the rough opening is going to be. One thing about measuring the top is we're gonna wanna leave the weld in place and install the door right on top of the welds. You don't wanna cut through the welds because it's difficult. So we're gonna cut right on the top of the weld. We got 81 and a half. So that there, I got them all marked. And then if you've ever done any container mods before and you have any scrap corrugation, we love this. You can use, there's flexible rulers or whatever to transfer your line across, but this just works so great for us. So if we have ever cut anything that's nice and straight, now we can utilize this as our marking template. So this, you'll notice a hole in it. That's for our big Air 45 vents. Uh, Now 
There we go. Next step, grab a face shield, angle grinder, even a guard, gloves, cut her out. Uh, when you are cutting your rough opening, make sure that you leave a couple tabs uncut at the bottom. So these two outside corrugations, if you just leave, uh, say, half an inch of metal on both sides, then when you finish cutting everything, the whole thing is going to hinge and fall outwards and you can control the fall. So you can set a pallet here if it was a big heavy panel and you just wanna lift that with your bobcat or forklift afterwards. Another important thing to note is when you're cutting, if you start by cutting the bottom, uh, then you're not gonna bind your disc. So your cutting wheel, if you cut everything first and then cut the bottom, the weight of the panel will actually bind it. So if you always try to cut your bottom first and then go up and across the top, that's gonna be the easiest or the least amount of effort in cutting it and, and the safest. You don't wanna explode a cutting wheel, it's super dangerous. Thank you, William, for cutting that out. I'm just gonna jump inside and do the easy part. There's just a couple tabs to cut. I'm gonna drop this panel. I'm gonna drop it outwards and I'm not gonna have any extension cords laying on the ground when I drop it. There are very good odds that you'll run into a D-ring where you're cutting the hole as well. So I just wanna hack that out of the way. So it's Monday morning, we are back and the boys, it seems as if they uh, already got a bulb seal. So I'll just uh, put this side bulb seal, I'll peel it off and show it. It's just a, a U grip and then a U bulb and it grabs the one flange here on the side. But sweet, it's an automotive grade bulb seal, which is great for containers that are moving often because these things do twist during transport or, or while you're handling them. With that, uh, if you use a normal North American door seal that's just fixed in a rigid place, the moment it pushes back on it once, it doesn't self-heal, it doesn't come back to where it needs to be. So that was a huge, huge aha moment for us. Fits in there really nicely. So we'll wanna make sure that the frame isn't parallelogrammed, so it has to be nice and square. And especially, even with the weight of the door, the door can pull on the frame a little bit. So a lot of times when we install the door, we wanna prop something under the door and almost just kink it so that it's tilted upwards. So once you take the pressure off and gravity's pulling on that door, it does sit nice and true. And so basically make sure your latch is centered in the hole where the latch goes. Right now, this container, we did not try to level it. So it's not level. So if you run a level across the header, you're gonna be struggling with that door and the operation of it. So you definitely just wanna trust the corrugations, measure off of that and follow that. Finally, just trust the operation of the door. So if the door is operating smoothly and the latch is latching dead center of the latch hole, you know you've done a good job. You've got no daylight coming around any of the corners. We'll throw the hinges on and then put the door in. We'll get everything nice and centered before we even tack the frame in place. So this is what, a number three Phillips? So do you have your impact turned to the highest speed there or what? The slowest. Slowest, right. So you gotta be careful with those screws. They're not notoriously prone to stripping, so just nice and slow. Honestly, probably just do them by hand, but with these drills, if you turn it to the number one setting. With these hinges, uh, there's a, an open side and a closed side. That open one is the bottom, so you don't want rain or ice getting in there. So that's typically the bottom. Uh, a lot of times with these frames, I don't know if we send them with the hinges installed already, so just be aware of that. Potentially they'll be installed for, most people use a right hand swing door, so the same swing as this, and probably the way that we should install them for you guys, but if you are doing a left hand swing and you were worried about that, then locate the hinges. So here are these doors, uh, we get them so that they're just single prepped, so we can actually rotate the door one way or the other, because you want to make sure in the back side of the, the hinges here, there's only able to accept the hinge on the one side of the door. 
I don't think there's much door frames on the planet that are truly reversible like this. And so North America's kind of come up with some standards. Sweet, one in. This is also a really heavy door. We typically use 20 gauge doors, but we were uh, playing with an 18 gauge here and it made it way heavier. So even being a 32 inch door, it's still quite heavy. Another thing we wanna play around with is uh, some composite doors. There's doors made in Taiwan that are uh, like a white fiberglass or something. You can like submerge them in water for two years and they're still good. They're awesome because they're solid and then for shipping, they don't get damaged. Plus, if you're doing a mod job, say it's a bunkhouse or something for your uh, cabin or whatever, and you want a prettier door, they're a nice white door and they're a paintable door. Voila. So we're gonna start with the hinge side. That's where all the weight is. So we're gonna tack the bottom of the hinge side, then we'll get the frame nice and plumb. Once the hinge side of the frame's in, then we can adjust the door up and down to make sure that it's running nice and square. So first step. We we'll wanna make sure we're nice and plumb upwards. We'll get some rivets in here. Then we'll yank on that and we'll finish off the, uh, the latch sides. So it looks really good inside there. So I'll put the top one in. If you feel the gap along the top of the door, the bottom of the door, and you look down here, and everything's looking good. Another thing, sometimes we like to just put the, the latch hardware in the hole without the actual lever. And you can look at that to see if it's striking right in the dead center of the hole that we've allotted. But I can just see it's really good, yeah, straight across here to where that, that latch hole is. I think we'll be happy with where it is. You can even check the door seal around. Not gonna be any daylight coming around any of the sides, top or bottom. So let's tack the latch side of the frame in now. So we're actually insulating this container. Uh, and because we're doing that, we're gonna install our storm chain a little bit differently, but I drilled the holes out anyway. So here, we have four holes. If this was a non-insulated container, we'd put the storm chain on the inside and then you'd use longer rivets and you go right through three layers and compress that storm chain and then the other part of it installs on the door here. We might even install it here for you just because I think a lot of people are buying this for the non-insulated position and that's something we can just quickly drill out those four rivets, just put normal rivets back in. But uh, let's get the other two in first. If you are insulating yours and you do want to install the storm chain on whatever your, uh, your return is that you're finishing the inside header portion of the door, then you'd only need to drill out the bottom two holes, not the top two. So here's that storm chain. Uh, we supply these with the Container Modification World door kit and we've laser cut into the range rip portion of the header, the exact hole size. So William should in theory be able to just hold that up inside there and I'll put the rivets through the back. Man, so the final thing here, we already uh, sealed it up between the flanges, the side flanges and the container. So we just need to take our sealant and go across the header here. In our previous video, we used a top bulb seal for that. That actually would potentially allow water to come through it. So a lot of people are like, oh, where's the top bulb seal? Where's the top bulb seal? We actually don't really agree with it after thinking about it. We just like to cut our hole uh, very straight, a nice line, and then just seal that with this dowel seal, which is amazing stuff. So do that next. Also grab some clear at the end. There's just a few little fold lines uh, on the outside of the header. And potentially if you can see any daylight coming in from the inside, we'll uh, get those as well. But on this specific mod, we are spray foaming the interior, which is just gonna lock all this in anyway. But I do definitely wanna show you guys that. William just put a mark where he wants that. It'll hold it at, I don't know, what is that? 135 degrees or so, all the way swung open. And now I'll close the door on him. 
and he can install that from the inside. And so William marked two holes here. We closed the door first to make sure that it wasn't colliding with the door seal, because the door seal comes uh, for the first half inch of the door. Here, just so I don't walk with my drill bit, one would want to center punch the holes. Got him. So the levers that we get have a couple pins here. You can drill additional holes in the door and then you could utilize more areas to clamp your lever to your door. Whoops. But we've found just the other two snugged right up when you're sandwiching it with the plate here is more than enough. No warranty phone calls, so no news is good news. We still utilize the uh, stainless strike plate that comes with it. It's because the, the door frame is galvanized. As you uh, scratch the galvanized, I guess you could expose the mild steel that's underneath there and cause premature rusting. So the stainless steel strike plate's a good idea. Also, uh, the frame is built to accommodate that added material thickness. So if it didn't use it, the latch would actually be further away from where it's supposed to latch and you'd be adding extra stress on your, your, the last of your door levers. My apologies, this video uh, drug out a little bit. We got rained out, it's been raining for two days and won't quit, so we're just gonna get right at her. But we do have this 32 inch door all installed now. So what we love about this door is that it is very shippable. It is great for e-commerce. Uh, we can ship the slab itself and then the frame separately and then uh, a DIYer could put all this together and install it in their container. And what's really cool about them is that the whole thing is 35 inches wide. So our old 36 inch man doors, the uh, whole frame would jump to another corrugation and the frame was 44 inches wide. So we've reduced the frame size by nine inches, which is uh, substantial. And what's the best part about this is you'll see a weld right here and you see a weld right here. So now this door is dead center in this 20 foot shipping container. Instead of this, uh, having to be offset to one side or the other. Now we can truly center the door and then have windows towards the end of each. And this is the key for our 20 foot standard uh, GLO shipping containers. So our ground level offices, this was a big aha moment for us. And so we're happy to use the 32 inch door. If you need additional uh, width to get into your shipping container, you have container doors on the end of the can. So do you really need a 36 inch door? That would only be in instances where uh, egress or for accessibility, but not necessarily just your everyday uh, person just needing additional or easier access in and out of your shipping container. So we love this. If you loved our video and watching us develop this over the 12 years, please help us out. Give the video a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.